Four sets of armor for them. Neo is going to be, I say utility player, he's just got a Glock and a Smoke. He's uh, dropped a Tech-9 down for Snacks. He's going to be taking the role of Raid Boss here. CT's not really showing too much in terms of aggression. We can see them spreading out across the map, but there's the first kill from MSL. He does take down one, and Config chimes in as well. So the five on three is going to force VP to execute onto B now. Yali goes in all by his lonesome, but he still gets the frag nonetheless. Probably a kill that Dignitas really should have picked up. Interesting as well that Snack's going for a very similar tactic to what we saw Carrigan do. The raid boss through underpass, up through connector. And this has gone very well indeed for VP. Okay. And I was about to say, barring a miracle from MSL, this will be them claiming the first pistol round on Mirage. So Dignitas get the first two frags there. Seems like things are all tied up. And VP, like I said, is forced to actually just push into the B bomb side at that point. You don't really have any positional control of the map. They're giving the call off the way you, you probably are. So they go in and somehow just find the first two kills. And the round falls apart for Dignitas there. The Ray Boss, like we said, holding towards middle, stopping any rotations coming in. And that's a very strong start for them going into the second one now. You can see the Desert Eagles coming out for CTs. They're not going to be forcing armor here. Just trying to find any sort of one digs they can. They were very effective on cash can they do anything else with this tenski was actually one of the stronger players of that weapon and now that it looks like pp will be edging their way in towards middle a little bit of a misprone smoke there towards mid it's been a while since somebody had to say that they're actually on a deco pretty much all desert eagles on the eco well, this is what we're talking about if you fully invest into this and you don't have the awp and yep. you find yourself in a difficult position so i think the desert eagle uh purchase is very viable here the fact you there's so many long range angles you can force and potentially win as well just like that tenski takes the first one gets down taz here probably the real chance to get the arlo as well he is taken down in the end and msl trying to stay alive desperately here but that's going to be the round pretty much decided as rubino and krb are the last players remaining unless they can find an absolute miracle shot here it's not going to happen krb does take down snacks but it's going to be left in the two on one he's stuck towards ct spawn though with no bomb so this is interesting. The teasers actually just wanted to finish this there and then. They didn't even want the bomb. They faced him at the same time and secured the round. And you can see Dignitas. They probably will be just going in for pretty much full eco this round. They've got, well, interesting enough, they've actually got Kiabi on the CZ and our body armor. I guess he got a couple of kills. He can justify that. Let's see how VP decide to approach this one. You can see after they lost a couple of frags. So there's going to have three SMGs, one PT-50, and only one rifle. This could actually get a little bit hairy for them. They'll lose that first frag again. He's boosting up towards Palace. MSL doing a decent amount of damage there. Actually, headshots has Taz through the smoke. And PRB actually pushing the Palace as well. Yeah, getting that information. I suppose if you're going to have the CZ with the armor, you want to be in a close claustrophobic environment like Palace. Gives you the best chance to maybe get the, the frag and pick up a weapon for your team. But MP7 is going to be used by Taz to take out MSL. Meanwhile, Kiabi is still pushing around the back. If yeah. VP continued to play this slow, he could get himself into a good enough position and to start landing some frags. Neo is ready for him. There. You can see like they are ready for the situation. And right now, they're waiting for the CTs to make the mistakes. Neo should find Kiabi here. But as I say that, though, he capitalizes. That has managed to get that first frag. And now it's Pasha to answer back. And they make their way into the B-bomb side. So this should be a simple plan for them now. Get control of Kitchen as well. CTs not really left with many options in the situation. Pasha struggles a little bit to get that second kill, but does get it in the end. It'll leave Tenski and Kiabi. In the unwinnable situation, Kiabi could save this CZ and army, you know, just because he's got the body armor and it's free to upgrade it. Like, essentially, it's like 300 bucks to upgrade the head armor next round. So, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you try and save that. Only if you have the, the armor on 100, there, you get that discount. Looks like they're going to be watching each other's backs as well. So, Tenski can get some uh, fire down, maybe get an avenging frag. Best case scenario, of course, if they can pick up a frag and take the weapon through into round four. But VP have this round regardless. So they are going to be starting off at 3-0. And Dignitas, we were saying before about the importance of them getting momentum in this map so far. So good as far as the poles are concerned. And it looks like Kiwi will be able to keep that yeah. CZ with the armor, which is a bit of a win. Well, yeah, I think, like, like I said before, it actually means you get a little bit more pocket money going to the next round. And you can see he's not even going to buy up head armor. He knows he's going against full AKs this round. So that makes complete sense, really. Five rifles coming in. Not going to be going for the AWP this time. They're going to be opting for more of a heavy utility-based game. Five smokes. And you can see now the T spreading out across the map. No real aggression being shown from the CTs just yet. Just want to feel out the map a little bit. They've stacked three players towards A. And nice they said config by himself towards that B-bomb site. Thing is, normally, if you're in a position like this on the CT side against any team, 
you're feeling quite pressured because if you lose this, suddenly it can become 5 6 0. But against VP, especially, Henry, this is terrifying. You have to put that foot down. Alongside, they're setting up for an A split here. They have got full control of middle. No CTs showing any presence there whatsoever. MSL just darting between the bombs. So he's trying to work out what the hell's going on. And you can see them slowly making their way in. Snax has actually got control of jungle as well. This is a nightmare situation for Dig. They need to make something happen right now. And that should have been it. They do go down. And the A bomb site is completely swarmed. Tensky at least takes one down with him. But it's a nightmare situation for the CTs. When you allow a team like VP to have full control middle boosting up into window you don't really have any position control anywhere it's such a difficult round to try and win there the CT just waiting to die essentially Convig is in a 2 on 1 with the kid as well he has a chance of winning this round the bomb is ticking there and unless VP make a huge mistake it should be unwinnable this stage Saving Grace so has got a bomb so the smoke to put onto the bomb so maybe can do something with this let's see what he has planned probably going to tickle uh, well, I was going to say tickle the bomb try and draw a player out but Bialy beats him to the punch Sprays him through the smoke and Dignitas now face the nightmare of being on pistols with Kevlar. I don't feel like you can leave mid that, that open, like, especially if you don't have anyone even watching jungle. Snack's able to boost up the window and have full control and it's cool. The steps were clear, jungle was clear, they're going to be onto the bomb site, and it's just such an easy exchange for them when they go into the site. As we mentioned before, it's going to be a pretty much clean 5 0 here, and that's something goes horribly wrong there. Pasha actually does get dinked at the start of the round. KLB boosting up at the palace does get taken down by Neo. And now we can see them making their way into the A-bomb site. The CTs don't really have anything to hold them off, so you feel like we're waiting for this round to finish up. Rubino does take down Taz. There's Tensky remaining now, as he is pretty far removed from this round. Just got the Desert Eagle towards Connector. Bomb will be planted, and that will be all she wrote for this round. 5-0 oh, in favor of Virtus Pro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awkward. It's fine. Not that it makes no any difference that. whatsoever. Tensky's still a dead man, but... Uh. Well, finally, Dig can get the AWPs out. So it's going to be MSL. Mark him with that weapon. And I feel like he has to have more presence here. I'd like to see him more Carrigan style, maybe going towards short the AWP. No, he did be smoked out from the window. We get a replay here of Pasha missing the shot. What did he miss? Well, I guess it was just off his butt there. As we enter round number six, and Tensky will be the player going towards short. MSL has positioned himself towards window. Hasn't been smoked out just yet, but... T's have got control of the mid-boxes. Slow again from VP. These rounds have been working so well for them. Smoking window. That starves MSL of any information whatsoever. And in doing so, they have also got Neo, who's pushed up just below the window. And looking into connector. The bomb has been dropped in underpass. Easily retrievable, though. And Snacks is the first to land a punch. Tensky does answer back, however, he's going to be instrumental for his team. He's fallen down, and the bomb now is given free reign to be planted. But Bialy's playing this one safe. Doesn't want to just go charging in, trying to plant that bomb in case one of the CTs has been sneaky enough to hide on the site. But now, strength in numbers, that bomb has gone down, and Dignitas have a decision to make. Do they want to go in for this one? This kill with his there, it is. there we go, now they do. That's the green light. MSL nearly connects the second shot, finally gets taken down. And now Bialy comes in, so maybe the trap has been sprung from VP, and that kill gave them confidence, and in doing so, Dignitas now are on the brink. A terrible economy again, or have I spoke too soon? Kirby's gonna go for the defuse. That works, that works. Taz isn't in the position to stop this for oh! one second. Oh, he just about gets the defuse, I believe. Yes, he did. 5-1, Dignitas. Well, a little bit of a miracle there. The plant not really working out. I was about to say, I was looking at the radar, but well, this is an interesting position to be playing towards short in this uh, two-on-one. You've got a bad post-plant situation going on if your player dies towards bench. That's exactly what happened. Kiabi, nice shot from him onto Bialy. Then he just knows what's going on at this stage. Has the intel from his teammate. As Taz got that kill on short before, and it comes down to five HP. Vince, Man. that is actually kind of crazy. Did you see him duck that? I wonder if that duck literally dodged the bullet. You saw a bullet go like whiz past him. And there we go, then we enter round number seven. And it's actually going to be MSL picking up that first frag. It's a difficult buy for the CTs, even though they won the round. It came down to the one on one once again. You can see Config now on the scout. And they have only got one kit as well. No real smoke to play with apart from the one on Config. So I still favor VP going into this one, even though they are a man down. Let's see what they can do with this. That's the thing. The one thing Dignitas cannot afford to do right now is lose this round, because then you just reset your own loss. Bonus, Hard reset. It's and you are difficult. absolutely screwed. All right. And there it is, the man oh, advantage yeah. just been thrown away. And they've got a player towards connector as well. This kill means everything. Rubino unable to actually land it off, but Tensky comes in for the reply. Three plays three now 
But the problem is they haven't got any sort of control of the A bombs whatsoever. MSL's coming in from connector. The smokes come in and he gets fully flashed as well. Bomb will be planted successfully here. They've got an AWP on the bomb site. Task towards Shadow. And then we have the Arle on Tetris as well. What the CT's got planned for us here. They need to find a pick any second here. This is going to be the one, and it's a scout as well that prevails and takes down Pasha. Decent positions though for Vertus Pro. They're not out this round just yet. The smoke has landed. Oh, Taz was spoilt for choice. The new player jumps up on top. Booth. They very nearly line up for Bialy. But for the second consecutive time, Dignitas will have this. And although Tenski did have a diffuse kit, MSL. Like, screw you, dude. Yeah, I'm I got the this. kills. I'm taking this. I want the points. Yeah, MSL with three kills there. That's pretty big by him. And they pick up the AWP as well. Just when their money was getting to the point of no return. The scout shot made it happen and the retake was a possibility there big round for them to win they would have been on a hard reset there fourteen hundred dollars and that could have been cost them a couple of rounds but they're not out of the woods just yet vince because full by coming from bp once again pasha with that awp cts haven't shown anything out of the ordinary so far it's all been pretty pretty standard and no aggressive pushes from them just kind of holding back and just hanging on for dear life with their deficit here it looks like a full execution Onto the B side here. Smoke's going to be coming in thick and fast, and a flashbang from Bialy will be going for the window. He'll be leading the charge as well. He actually screws up the, the flash a little bit. That Ooh. could be a problem as well. Config trying to channel his in it. NBK. And he has connected. Bialy drops down. Oh, they're going to check on top of the site. Tenski could be in the money here. And if he just bides his time and waits, he's going to go for the peak. There's the first frag. Spins back around again. He hasn't managed to land the second shot. In fairness to him, there was heavy smoke enough to choke on. And Config still doing the damage with the scout. Neo sprays down in a one versus two, caught reloading, and finally bites the dust. So three consecutive rounds. Dignitas retake and get a defuse. It just goes to show that even when VP lose, they're taking them right down to the wire. Yeah, but that's going to be a big round for Dig. They get three in a row now. Now they're finally starting to balance the books a little bit. It seemed like Bialy flashing himself there. Actually took the vision away and the scout to jump up and tag him and get the second shot and pick up that first kill as well. Got decent intel. Slowed the tees down. I think he's probably flashed a couple of his teammates as well and stopping the refrag coming in straight away. So we enter round number nine and now they really are chipping away at that terrorist economy. You see Pasha is just going to be on the MAC-10 this time instead of the AWP. Definitely not the weapon of choice for him, but uh, it's going to be Convict still on the scout. He's been doing some serious work with that weapon as well. Why not keep it? If you're finding tags and frags every round, might as well keep rocking with it. So VP this time going to be sending one player in the form of Bialy towards the A ramp just to try and gain some attention. Another A split coming in potentially here. Yeah. Rabino with two. Taz and Snacks both line up. And like Domino's get knocked down. However, VP answer right back. This will favor the terrorists you have to feel. What they didn't factor in is that Kirby would be in shadow still with a perfect timing peak. That grenade does connect onto Pasha, goes for the spray, and again, VP come out second best. Much better from Dignitas, but Neo is still alive, still has a minute to play with. Can he get the drop on config? Yes, he can. And he lands the frag as well. That flashbang connects, but not in enough time. Oh, oh Neo with another onto Kirby. Beautiful headshot. And now with 50 seconds. So much pressure on Tenski. Neo is going to fake out the bomb, going to go for that quick peek. He spots it, but Tenski's too fast on the trigger. However, again, Dignitas just about survive, and their economy is incredibly iffy right now. Oh, that could have been one of the all-time classic Neo clutches there. Amazing shot, that second one here coming up. That was just textbook stuff there. Such great awareness, waiting for the CT reface there. That's a hell of a shot. That's a sick shot. He really did set himself up there for a real chance to win that round, but it wasn't meant to be. Dignitas take their fourth in the row, and now VP are answering back. It's the quasi buy with the smoke grenades, going for the force plant, and seeing whether they can make this uncomfortable for the CTs as they make their way into the A-bomb site now. They do indeed. They can sense the blood in the water as they go for another. Pistol, Kevlar by MSL with two frags, but it's a good hold so far from the CTs. Rabino gets his second, looking for a third as well. Runs out a bullet, whips out the USP, can't get it finished off. And somehow Pasha lives to fight for another day. Is he just delaying the inevitable? Yes, he is. Rabino, great hold. Actually, I think he survived on one HP as well. Yeah. So that's a, a pretty key moment there for Dignitas. Five to five, though. Saves the AWP, but these rounds have been so close. They're losing frags every single time. The money still is a problem with it, even after winning five rounds in a row. VP maybe getting a little bit frustrated now. They've got five AK-47s. Full smokes and Molotovs as well. Looking like they're going to be favoring towards that mid-area once again. It seems like finally we have a change of pace here. MSL maybe be dropping down towards the connector area, seeing if we can find our first frag. Just dodging that smoke that VP have been using towards mid, but this time VP not actually showing any presence there whatsoever. That should just be splitting the map up. 
and waiting for the aggression from the CTs. See what the plan is ultimately here. MSL makes his way up towards middle, just trying to gain any intel he can. He's going to be greeted there by Pasha. He takes him down, and Rubino chimes in as well. And finally, they have a real decent man advantage here. They don't need to force the issue anymore. Just need to hold back and force the terrorists in an unfavorable situation. The reason that's so effective is because Ding Attacks really haven't done that so far exactly. on this map. They it's the first time. Too. They've been so traditional with that exactly. so far. They chucked this in just at the right time. It's a really nice play. And MSL getting that first pick, and Rubino backing him up as well. Should secure the round. Operative word, should. As the T's now are going to be making their way towards the B apartments. Bomb in hand. Love Taz. It's going to be Config holding them off. He's going to be jumping up trying to spot them. I think he did just spot one there. They're going to be flashing him off and holding on as much as he can. Oh, that Molotov. I feel they're trying to land that on Van instead. They actually slowed themselves down. Exactly. That was uh, a face plant if ever you've seen one from VP. I mean, to be fair, though, it's not necessarily what lost them the round. They, they were already in a 3v5, yeah, but it definitely like, didn't help matters. At, at that point, I feel like the round had already been lost. It was just like the Hail Mary play. Let's just go towards B and see what happens. We can find that first frag. Maybe we can do something with this. Finally, I think we'll be seeing a full eco coming in. You can see VP. Oh, hello. Okay. No, they changed their mind. I was going to say they probably want to opt and try and get the, the AWP out once again and have a real decent buy. But they will be going in for the force buy once more. AK-47s, Tech Man on Pasha. Have three smokes to play with, but not going to be choosing to execute here. Config changing the pace up a little bit. This time he's opting to go aggressively in the B apartments here. I'm not sure if he got spotted there, but he's getting back up from his teammate. Trying to bait in. Potentially he's falling back and he can just be lying in wait here. I wonder if this is a bit of frustration right now from VP. They've been so close yet so far a number of times. Another day this could easily yeah. be like a 9-3 kind yeah. of half. It's been so many close one-on-ones. They've got in the favor of digging. Very key moments of the economy game. And here we go, we enter round number 12. VP slowly gaining traction towards middle. We can see Tensky there. He's just waiting for any boost to be coming up. That was a problem for them in one of the gun rounds. The snacks did get boosted up, and now they're going to be ready for it this time. Oh, that's the bomb going in first. Rubino doesn't get anything from it. That is a huge mistake. And Dignitas will probably pay dearly. Pasha, close range, executing MSL, will pick the AWP up. As perfect as VP could have hoped for coming into this round. And just when things were starting to look a bit shady for them, they pull it back. Very Rubino, man, he will be so livid with himself right now. That should have been at least one frag. And I think the first player through was the bomb carrier as well. Yeah. And a huge frag for him not to take down and actually results in them taking a single frag in the entire round there. So finally, after losing six in a row, it seems like VP finally will get some footing into this map. Config, the last remaining player, is towards the top of middle here with the AK in hand. The money's not fantastic for Diggy, you know, they will be able to get A by here. I mean, if you can save the AK, that will definitely help them just beef it up a little bit. You can see KRB's on 3,800, Config on 4,200, so saving that AK definitely has helped. They will have a full buy here, but now VP do get the AWP out once more. Snacks will be taking this time. Pasha's actually, oh, there we go, they swapped it back over, so Snacks, Pasha will be back on the AWP. And this is the kill you were talking about. He needed to get one there at least, right? It, exactly. Because if he gets that first frag with the way that CS works, like for some reason, when a terrorist dies with a bomb, they're like, here you go, mate. And they just throw it like 50 yards. So you never know where that bomb ends up. It could completely change that round. But as we said previously, you just got to dust yourself off. Don't think too much about the past. Focus on the present. Rubino, think about that sick ace you pulled off, that ridiculous pistol. And again, I'm into round number 13. Two to go. The CT is not showing that aggression anymore. They're actually playing three players towards the A bomb side, leaving middle completely open. This was a problem for them before. As soon as Snacks got on that window, everything fell apart. And you can see this is a little bit of a bait now coming from VP. They're throwing flashes and smokes towards that A bomb site. Bialy's falling back. Oh, where are they deciding to go with this? Snacks gets control of the connector, but they haven't really shown their hand. Looks like they will be falling back towards B. So they're just trying to peel away as many CTs as they can from that B bomb site. They need to act fast though before the game is up. Tensky's starting to realize as to what's going on. No early frags, but you can see with the damage being exchanged across the board, it's keeping them in two mind snacks up on the box. Will deliver the fatal blow to Kirby. In the back of the head. Conflict has literally ran past a terrorist player there. I don't think he realizes what's going on. You can see Piali. They've literally walked past each other, exchanged a oh little my. handshake, and then walked in. Is it? Piali hasn't got the bombs. It's not too crazy, but he hasn't given the information to his teammate. Ultimately, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Conflict making his way down to underpass. Snacks does get taken down by MSL. One and two working out for the CTs. And you can see that Tensky, even though it may have been called like apps is clear, 
He's still so careful. Okay. But he's gonna get picked off. Does dink Neo in the exchange though? So yeah, it's two one three. But Neo, if that HE lands anywhere near him, he's a dead man. Config with a beautiful headshot. Bialy will bite the dust. Molotov bounce off the door. He's hoping that would have gone inside kitchen. And surely Neo can't get this one done. He's no. just too many angles to cover. And Dignitas will take the lead once more. Interesting round there. CT's deciding to push into the beer apartments, walk straight past each other. After the initial frags, didn't matter too much in the end. And Dignitas def definitely bounced back there after dropping one round. Not that it'll be too detrimental to Virtus Pro after having that very clean gun round before. Still have money in the banks to get an AWP. The AWP hasn't been too effective for them. I can't rem remember around when it actually had an impactful frag to open up the map. It's just been there. It hasn't really done yeah. too much for the terrorists so far. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, misses the shot. There it is. And Pasha punishes that. MSL for it. That's a frag you've got to land from MSL's perspective. There was no return fire from that initial charge. And just like that, opens up mid nicely. Pasha is going to use his freedom to go into connector. That has been spotted. You can see that Kirby was just caught in two mines. He knew someone's connector. And it left him very vulnerable from the palace push. And this is a textbook take from VP. Only config remains. Yeah. They get that initial frag and they just capitalize on it straight away. You can see them making their decisions very quickly there. Neo gets in, finds two very strong headshots. There's just going to be config remaining. And he will be taken out as well as the VP tie things up. 7 7. That's a very big round for them. They can see the CT money is not too fantastic if you go into round number 15 here. They're going to have Famas's Desert Eagles and a scout as well. So. You'd assume this round's going only in one direction. That's going to be in VPs. They get the double orb set up out this time. Snacks and Passion wielding those weapons. And you feel like CTs do have to make something happen here. They need to be forcing the issue somewhere. Yeah. Trying to find an early frag. Maybe pushing into those B apartments again. And seeing if they can get some intel. There's the first frag. They try to make it happen towards Palace. Kiabi, though, with the double what? headshot of the Desert Eagle. Out of nowhere, he makes those kills and gives Dignitas a real chance in the final round of the half here. They said someone's going to have to step up and try something, and Kirby has done just that. MSL is in command from Connector, the second frag through the smoke. And Pasha, he doesn't want to give his position away. If he shoots that, even if he lands the frag, Henry, instantly they know where he is and they've got that bomb down. This is the thing. Now he can try and use the element of surprise, but... I feel like he can probably get one frag out of this, but like you said, as soon as that happens, he's done for. And it's not even going to get that. Kiabi finishes it off, and Dignitas has actually win the half there. The round that was, they had literally nothing to play with. Some Famases, a scout, and a deagle. And they deliver the goods. KRB with the double deag in the apartments. That's kind of nuts. Even though he lost his teammate, he comes back in and punishes the tees. And MSL with a double Famas spray down as well. Impressive stuff there. It's VP. Potentially, maybe. I guess they, they, they can't even be blamed for doing something wrong there. They were holding the apartments. The CT's forced the issue. They get the first frag. And maybe a little bit of an overface here, but MSL can't take anything away from him there. The shot through the smoke works out for him yep. and takes the bomb plant down as well. So we'll also take nothing away from Kirby because that would not have been possible had Kirby not have connected those one digs. What's interesting as well, like Dig actually go five zero down and then come back to win the half. That's yep. that's kind of crazy. Like they actually blocked once they got their, their economy back on track, they completely shut them down there. It wasn't actually down to the fact they were doing anything crazy, like uh, pushing in loads of times and like taking the game towards VP, just holding up solidly on the bomb sites and uh, locking down anything versus Pro brought to the table. The only one run I can think of is when MSL went for that aggressive play towards the top of middle. That's the only time they really took the game towards Dig. But here we go in the second half. Will be beginning. It's going to be Dignitas on the T side now. Let's have a look at that bias and we'll work out what's going on. They've got three sets of smokes and two Glock armor players. This Bikarbi and Rubino. This would automatically say to me they're going to be going towards that A bomb site. And wall of smokes, a bomb plant goes down and uh, just try and hold off the CT as much as they can. They need to be pushing into CT spawn. They need to be choosing an area to lock down. Can't just sit back and allow the retake of the CTs to come in now. Dignitas playing this one slow. Oh my Hello. goodness. Snacks gets headshotted. The drive by Glock is real. It does keep him alive. Okay. But Tensky comes in. Snacks has been picked off as well. Beautiful opening frags from Dignitas. The bomb's been planted. And there's no defuse kit on VP. Yeah. They went full on armor with pistols. You can see Tensky has got full control of CT spawn as well. You have to do that. You need to be locking down at least one area. You can't just sit there like melons waiting to be retaked. But still three CTs remaining here. Seeing they can find the one bullet headshots. But very disciplined play coming in from Dig. Gonna find frags, it has to be right here, right now. Pasha connects one, they almost line up for him, but Dignitas have done exactly 
what they're after. And again, this is the loser's matchup. If they lose this map, they're out. A lot of pressure on their shoulders for sure. Absolutely. Nice fast pistol round for them, getting the smokes down. Grenades raining in on CT spawn. Tends to actually finds one there. And a kill through the smoke as well. Locked down that CT spawn area. Got great intel as to where the CTs would be retaking from that point. Once you spot, there's no one there. They have a real chance of making things happen. So another fast round coming from Dig here. A lot of teams would opt to go very slowly on these rounds. You see VP pushing into that lower ramp area, but it's not going to matter because the T's are coming in through connector. Find the first two frags as well. This could be holding up now, waiting for the CT reaction to come in. It actually does come, but Bialy capitalized on the situation. Now Tenski alone, he gets punished as well. Snacks finds a kill onto him, brings it to the three on three. This is a real tricky situation now for Dig. They still have the bomb in the hands of Convict, so still obviously in the round. But the CTs will be able to pick up a couple of AKs now. That's kind of interesting how that round went down after losing the first two frags. Now you can't be serious, Dignitas. You cannot afford to lose this round. VP are on the prowl, they're on the hunt. And they have called correctly. But right now, the bomb is transitioning over to that B side. However, there's so much time to play with. They can still wrap themselves through underpass, through connector, back to the A side. And that appears to be the case. Tense moment now. Dignitas know they can't afford to lose this round. There's going to be one player towards the ladder room there. It's going to be Rubino with the P90. He takes, does take down Snacks and give them the man advantage. The problem is Bial is still alive. Thankfully, they lock him down. It's just going to be Taj remaining now with the scout and no kit. And just assume the bomb will be going down any second, and he should be out of the equation as soon as that happens. So it's a nice position there from <laughs> Rubino. He does manage to get dinged and drops down just in time. But there we go, Dingus has hold on after winning the pistol. Got a little bit hairy towards that connector area, but once they win the round, that's all that matters here. Now VP presumably onto the full eco. A couple of PC-50s perhaps, maybe a flashbang to push up towards the top of the middle. And there are the flashbangs. Let's see what they decide to do here. Going to be stacking towards the A side here. All players towards that area. But the problem is, I think the Tats have opted for all five towards the B side. It's going in nice and fast. Keep it simple. B rush. Good luck to you, Pasha. Can you take anyone down with you is a question. He somehow survived for this long. Finally will bite the dust. Bialy, though, is going to get himself a frag with that P250. And so will Neo. Now going to be pushing through B app. So a couple of question marks for Dignitas that they need to tick off. Rubino, P90 will always trump the P250. You know, he's taking damage, he's taking flak right now from the site itself. How is he not dead yet? He's still somehow alive. Finally, he will be picked off from con config. And Taz follows suit. Again though, Dignitas, like they're getting the bombs, they're getting the rounds, but it's far from clear. Well, here we go, that's where things get interesting. After the four spot in the second round, you can see that's affected the VP economy a little bit. No AWP to kick things off. Gonna be going for five rivals here. Neo, the only player with a kit. That's been to round number 19. I think the Taz aren't gonna be doing anything too special. Just gonna be spreading themselves across the map. Maybe three players towards A. Actually setting up for smokes is straight away. It's kind of interesting. Maybe they're going for a fast A split here. And the CTs are lying in wait. No one's showing any real heavy aggression towards mid. The smokes do come in now. You can see two terrorists towards the top of the middle. I assume they'll be. Challenging through connector here is Rubino to pick up the first frag on the Neo as well as to set this A split up to be very successful if the next frag comes in their favor. Snacks in a difficult position. He needs to find one. He doesn't. MSL takes him down. Now the retake is on. Oh my goodness, MSL. This turns into Rambo. Fears no man. Destroying two players all by himself. Bombs been planted and VP on a map that I honestly felt they would just walk away with. Yeah. This has been labored. Anything but easy. They're gonna now trail 12 to 7. Their economy's bust again. Need to desperately save these weapons. And Pasha has just been headshotted down from Rubino. Had no time to react to that. It's all on Bialy. Can he save this M4? What was quite cool about that was there's a Dignitas throwing those smokes over at the start. They don't actually go in at the straight at the start of the round when the smokes bloom. They're waiting for the reaction from the CT. They have two players dedicated towards that mid side. Waiting for a player to come in through window. They take him down. That starts to rot. And you can see the CT's panicking at that stage. It's actually very nicely executed there. So Dignitas going up 4-0. On the second half here, VP once again going to be pretty much on a full eco here. They've got about 3k in the coffers, but I'm sure we'll be seeing the AWP coming out next round. I think it has in a fantastic position here going forward. Looks like they'll be committing everyone towards the A side of the map. Just want to make sure they stay together, frag for frag, not let anything slip away. And just hold up maybe like 15 seconds here, then execute onto the A side effectively. Hold the phones for a second, Henry. Okay. Quad nades on VP. The airstrike. 
It is going to be called in. It certainly could. Question is where? Where are the coordinates? Well, after these smokes come in, I think all signs are the point of the A-bomb site. Here come the nades. What can they do with them? Well, Neo's not going to need the nade. He's going to just land the headshot instead. Pasha still has his grenade. Tenski's pretty low. But the problem is, so are VP in terms of manpower. Pasha still has that grenade, maybe waiting for the bomb plant. So he can just toss it on there. There we go. He's going to throw it over. This is going to do negligible damage. And this should be lights out for VP. Somehow Pasha does bag himself the frag. Down to two. The Dignitas have the bomb. They have the weapons. They have the extra player. And they will have a 13th round. Nice shot from Rubino. Pasha just trying to scamper away. Yeah, he's only got the silenced USP, but maybe he's got some intel as to where a weapon may be. Trying to find an exit frag here. Trying to see what the plan is, but... Let's see what he can do with it. Making his way towards Palace right now, but... It's going to be the rounds completely tied up. I don't think he'll get anything for his troubles here. As the bomb is about to explode in the pits, Dignitas on the 13th round. 13 plays 7 now. Great performances so far. Looking at the economy for the TC as well. It's very strong indeed. 10k after the rebuy on three players here. And now finally, this is what we were kind of expecting after the five rounds going against them. The double orb setup coming in for VP. Pasha and Snacks will be wielding those weapons. Let's see what kind of mentality they're going for on the first round here. It's going to be snacks towards window, not jumping down or forcing the issue too much. It's going to be holding back, and we've got Pash towards that B bomb side, but presumably going to be jumping up and trying to face and give some intel to his, towards his teammates. But it's another A attack coming in from Big. I'm very surprised and impressed at how Dignitas have been ag aggressing on their T round so far. Great discipline. A two for two trade. Make that a two for three in favor of Dignitas once again, while those orbs are still in play in Pash's hands. But there's so much smoke and flashes just being used here from Dignitas that he can't see a single thing. Bomb's going to get planted. The CTs are isolated from one another. So a lot rests on this AWP landing from Pasha. He's going to go up on Toll Booth right nice. into the crosshairs of Rubino. And again, Dignitas. Just nice, fast, simple play there from Dick. Getting in, making the headshots happen. And the double AWP setup just not effective whatsoever. They get smoked out, flashbangs come over. And Dick just using their big players there to enter the bomb site. We can have a look at the scoreboard quickly. We can see... It's MSL leading the charge there, followed by Config as well, and Rubino. It seems like a full team effort here. Everyone's just yeah. playing lights out CS right now. Everyone chiming in. Very few kills separate every player on their team. There we go then. A round that means everything for BP here. Neo does find the first frag. They have spotted the bomb as well. He's going to get a double for his troubles, but the thing is, David Tazard is answering back, and it's just going to be Pasha and Snacks, both with Max 7s in hand. I feel like this is only going one way, Metis. It's going to be map points in favor of Dignitas. I didn't think I'd be saying that Mirage, but they have played a fantastic game here on the second half. I really, really it, impressive stuff. I didn't think it either, but hold on a second, Henry. The bomb has been dropped, and that Mag 7 has magically transformed into an AK-47 instead. Okay. And it snacks. Okay. He still has grenades. He still has Kevlar. He's a player. He'd fancy to clutch these kind of scenarios. However, Rubino... He's going to be trying to stalk Snacks, coming up from behind. Snacks will probably assume this is the case. If he can get this frag onto Tenski, I feel like the power definitely shifts in his favor, but he could get caught. He's still looking down. Look down to your left-hand side. Tenski picks up the frag. Eight map points now for Dignitas. I never expected to see this scoreline on Mirage. Crazy. Nice way there from Dignitas, making sure they work together, slowly edging their way in. Tenski, knowing his low HP, is hugging that wall and does find the final frag there as well. So like you said, eight rounds required in a row. And I feel like Virtus Pro is not if, it's when they drop this map. This time they've got Scouts, Famuses, and the Max 7s once more. What is the play here? Going to be holding back for now. Not really much you can do with two Max 7s apart from sit, wait, and hope something is brought to you. Trying to play the Max 7s where they are most potent. The issue is that Dignitas have refused to play too aggressively so far on their T side. They have been very methodical in their aggression. Here come the flashbangs. This time it is going to be a faster push. The Molotovs land. Pasha will extinguish that. And he's going to jump back on top with the Max 7. Can't get anything done, though, for his troubles. Kirby comes in. Three separate frags on three separate players for Dignitas. And that pretty much sums up this entire Mirage performance. A scout and a Mag 7 or bust for VP on Mirage. 
It looks like we could be heading to Cobblestone after all. I think we definitely will be. That's going to seal the deal. Just snacks remaining now. The scout manages to take down Convict, but at this point, it's redundant. There it is. Dignitas come back in impeccable form. 16 plays 7 on VP's pick as well. That's a pretty crazy result for them. They are not done with this series just yet. We are going to Cobblestone. We certainly are. We did see in the build-up to this game, it's statistically their best map recently is Cobblestone.